And what is going on today? And for another night, afternoon, evening, whatever period of the day you're listening to JT, we're here for another moment of JT's. Oh, dang it, no. My iPad collapsed. Where or iPod? We're here for another night of random rhetoric. Shout out to everybody listening to me live right now. We're here for another night of random rhetoric for the boy talking to you. That is JT. And today I have with me my friend, my comrade, who has accompanied me to the trials and tribulations of life. Like the last shot, the Robert Lecter. I have my friend who has accompanied me for the last decade of trials and tribulations of life. My friend, <coughs> my friend, Stitch. Hi, Stitch. And for those who can't see, Stitch is not actually the living being Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. He's actually, uh, I, um, I don't know what you call these things—a beanie baby, uh, a beanie baby, uh, uh, a a mal a malfunction teddy bear. I don't know what you call them, but this is my homie, Love Stitch. I always love recording my podcast like a, without with, with the toy next to me. Helps me keep me keep myself grounded. Guapo Latte commented in the podcast. And he said, "My favorite Disney character is Stitch." Bro, of course, man. That just means you have good taste. Who's whose favorite Disney character? Whose favorite Disney character would not be Stitch? Stitch was dope. Stitch could lift 3,000 times his own weight. He had four arms. He had, really I don't know if he had four arms. Is it six arms? Because two of them he used to walk. I say six arms. He had six arms. He kind of reminded me of that one character from Street Fighter with like the four or five arms. He, and he was like, like, he looked like a, he looked like a giant Samoan with four arms. I forgot his name. That was like Korg, uh, Thranos, Thranos. What's his name? Was it Thranos? Might have been Thronos, I forgot. T- tight character, the one, the tightest character that you have possible to play in the game. Shout out to Mortal Kombat, by the way. Great game, one of the best video games in the world. And I was talking to this dude. Shout out to the homie in the car, I forgot his name. Maxwell, dude's name was Maxwell. I had an Uber ride with this one guy um, two days ago. His name was Maxwell. And I was talking to him. And I was talking to dude. And, um,. He was talking about he wanted to start a video game podcast. And I was like, that's dope. I was like, I love video games. Because I love video games. I'm just not that good at them. So I don't know if I'm really the guy who should be the authority on video games. Like, my expertise, my ability to get video games is very piss poor. I am probably the worst video game player in the world that has ever existed in life. And... I just like I, I just gotta be honest with you. My video game skills is horrendous. Like nigga, like you would kill. Like I've always been that one guy who, if ever I'm playing with a group of four or five dudes, if ever we're sitting down on the couch playing Xbox One or a PS4, I'm the bonus kill nigga. I'm the nigga that you kill him for a bonus kill in multiplayer. Whether we playing Call of Duty, whether we playing Halo, I'm the bonus kill nigga. And you know what? I'm a bonus kill. I'm a bonus kill bitch with pride. I take pride in what I am. Round of applause for me. I take pride in my bonus. I take pride. I take pride in my bonus kill ability. I I take pride in my bonus kill ability. I take pride in it. That, and it I, yeah, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. That's the strangest thing about being me. Like, and it might be like this for most people, but with me, it's weird being me because when it comes to stuff that I do, whether it's video games, whether it's playing tennis, whether it's playing Batman, which I love Batman, by the way. Batman is probably one of my favorite sports that ever existed. The thing I love about the thing I hate about me sometimes is like I'm you I'm either either really good at something or really terrible at something. And it's not that much space in left for an in-between spot for me. Like I'm either either really good at something or just really bad at it. It's either one of those two. It just it just varies. Like I am terrible at video games, but I'm amazing with talking to people. Great at making people laugh, terrible at uh terrible at playing basketball. I ain't terrible at basketball, but and no, I'm terrible at basketball. Let's be real. I'm terrible at basketball, but I'm good at Batman. Terrible at karate, but I'm good at boxing. Like, it's just weird. Like, it's weird polar opposites. What I do love to do, and this is an activity that I have not been able to test my skill or my expertise in, but I do want to do it. And I might record a podcast live when I do it because in San Francisco, they actually have a lot of clubs for this activity. It's parkour. I love, I effing love parkour. I love parkour more than I love my grandma's potato salad. I love doing parkour. Parkour is dope to me because I first off, growing up as a child, as a child, not only was I a fan of ninjas, but I also was a fan of Naruto. And I also was a fan of Inuyasha. And my favorite part of Inuyasha was 
I was the part where he would run and like kind of low key crouching tiger hitting dragon glide in the sky. It used to be hella dope. Guapo Latte commented on the podcast. He said, Are you terrible at baseball? I have yet to test my skill at baseball. When I played baseball when I was a kid, I wasn't that good at it. I wasn't that good. I'm going to tell you one sport that I, I did. When I was a kid, the one sport that I always did hella better than the people was kickball. And that was because from an early age, I always had hella big feet. So whenever we play kickball, I always I always have the natural talent to kick the ball hella farther because I would wear these heavy ass lug boots as a kid. Like so, I always had like I always could kick the ball hella farther than other kids. So yeah, right, yeah, that was my that was my thing. Bigfoot Joe, they used to call me back in the day, Bigfoot Joe. So yeah, not, nah, but I mean, you know. It is what it is. It's the game. I mean, even even now, as I get older, I'm still trying to find more things that I possibly could be a, a, adept at. Like I'm still trying to find more. I'm I'm constantly looking for this. I'm constantly looking to try to explore myself and try to explore more what I possibly could be good about, good at, or what are the skills am I hiding that possibly could be asked to me, even in this field. Because you know, when you just shout to Coach Jay Knight, because you know when you're doing podcasts, you know, I don't know. Like, my goal overall is to have the success of a famous broadcaster, of a famous podcaster with this podcast on YouTube and on Periscope and on my podcast. And then after that, a lot of the other creative aspirations that I've created in the past. Shut up, you know, I said, don't be boy, stupid. But, like, in, in a lot of the other, in a lot of other, in, in a lot of other aspirations that I've created in the past, I'll just shout to Friday show. A lot of the other, a lot of the other creatures that I created in the past, I'll put them. I'll put them out there and start taking those even more seriously. You know, that's that's the goal of that's the goal of JT right now. That's my goal right now is to start doing that. But first, I have to have success with the podcast, and I'm just trying to figure out where to make it go. I'm just trying to make it where to go. Coach A. Nice said, "What's the topic, man? Bro, literally, it's random rhetoric today. It's the random rhetoric that literally the topic just revolved. Literally, literally, the topic is just revolving. It's an open door. It's just going. It's just going from topic to topic. Whether it's me talking about Darkwing Duck, whether it's me talking about the dragons really exist, or me talking about is a Loch Ness monster really something that really existed. Me personally, I've always believed in the Loch Ness monster. I do believe in the Loch Ness monster. I think it's real. I think simply, I think I bl- shit like that, like the Loch Ness monster and dragons. I believe they really existed, but either we killed them all already or they died out. They or they died out before we had time to actually take photos of them because it can't like I know our ancestors came up with some weird shit, but all of us can't be lying. Like Coach J and I said, let's talk about how bad the Giants are. Bro, I'll be honest with you. I don't even watch baseball, so I wouldn't be able to tell you how bad the Giants are. When you say Giants, I automatically think of the Giants in the Bible called the Nephilim. And when I think of Giants, I think of Shaq. And it makes me wonder, what woman do I have to breed with? What woman do I have to have sex with to breed a kid almost as tall as Shaq? That makes me wonder that. That makes that makes me wonder that. I wonder, is it... What, what, what if I could... What if I could... Can... I wonder, are we going to get, are we going to get to that in the future? Are we going to get to a point in the future where you can have sex with a woman and actually pick out the facial features and the actual height of the, what the child is going to be? I wonder, are we going to be able to do that in the future? And see, the thing about that, what you guys, this is going to be hard because the first, to the first, to the first 156 kids, if we do get to a point where we have that technology, the first 156 kids that we do that to, they're going to come out a little bit, um, um, well-ish. Yeah, I just you have to be a genetically engineered kid. No, you have to no, because you'd have to you'd have to genetic you'd have to um I don't know, I think I think I don't know. You could probably you could probably you can genetically well we're gonna to get to the point where you genetically engineer can engineer kids just off off rip. That's gonna to get to that point just naturally. You know. I think I th- to be honest with you, I think we probably can already do something like that right now. It's just it's probably cost hella money. Stuff like that, genetically engineering kids, extending longevity of life. A lot of that stuff I do believe you can already you could already do already, but it's just that it's just that it costs it costs so much money to have done right now that it's like, bro, odds are that ain't happening. But with that being said, but you never know. Like you never you never know. Like you just have to you have to I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Besides, when my kids, when my kids come out, shout out to Coach and I said, "What color would you, what color would you make your engineer kid?" I make my kid the same color as me. My kid, 
I make my I make my kid the same color as me. I make my kid the same color as me. I mean, my goal has always been, you know, just letting you into JT's deal. I have I have sex with women of all races. I do all races, but my goal has always been to have to to have kids with a very 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 beautiful dark skinned woman. You just have really pretty kids because, like, I remember growing up. I remember growing up. I remember. I remember growing. I remember growing up. There was this family that lived next door to me. And it was this family of just dark skin. They were just black people. They were heavily dark skin, but everybody in that fucking family was bad. Like no homo. Even the dudes was good looking. Like the dudes were good looking. The girls were good looking. The girl. The girl. The girls were dark and thick. It's like hey, I'm gonna tell you right now. You think like I always tell you. I always tell you. You think a light skinned girl with a fat ass is cute. You ain't never seen a bad bitch until you see a, a woman who's dark skin with skin the color of Godiva chocolate with an ass big as a fucker. There's a girl named Brie on Instagram. I get miles. I understand you being attracted. You know, women use t- women use breast to breast feed, so I can understand that. But what? But what? But what? What makes? But what makes a woman? What makes a man even want to like? Like what makes you like a fat? Like what makes you like a fat ass? Cause ain't like you can like what can you do with it? Hey, they shout the oh what's up with you, man? What's up with you, man? Shout out to Matthew Knight. What's up with you? Yeah, no, nah, cause it, it ain't like it's anything you can do with it. Like you can't, you can't, you can't sit on it. You can't ride it. Like what? I want to. I'm asking you guys. I'm 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 gonna open up the question for them. what makes you attracted to a fat ass? What do you think makes a man attracted to a fat ass? Coach J Knight said white guys don't bra. Eh, nah, I've heard different. Uh, no, I like us like fat asses too. I'm thinking obviously hey, all of them don't like it, but because I, I mean, I, I'm talking about it. Embar- it embarrasses me sometimes the power that a fat ass has over me when I see one. Like I'm talking about, I, I like this ain't just even this in the even just like man, like I, I, I it gets it gets crazy. It gets it's it's amazing the power it has over me. So I always wonder like it's the titty. So I don't know what. what Jawapalate, Jawapalate said, "I am a breast guy." Matthew, I am breast is a good choice. Matthew Knight said, "What are you talking about?" We we're talking about the beauty of the women that walk this earth. We we're talking about the aesthetic appeal of the women that populate this earth. And what I was saying was about talking about how how powerful the appeal of a fat ass is to me, or at least me of my kindred race. And I was wondering. <gasps> Why do fat asses have such an appeal to men? I've always wondered that. Like, why do fat asses appeal to men so much? But the thing, particularly, now, I'm wondering that because, like, like I said, I can understand why breast appeal to women, sci- breast appeal to men scientifically, because you know you use breast to breastfeed a baby. Breast or a sign of a woman. Big breast or a sign of a woman being, I guess, like healthy or possibly making a good mother. So I can understand why that would attract you, but. With an ass, I don't see what it can do besides making it hard for you to wipe. So I don't understand like what's the appeal to it, but it sure has the power over me. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Let's see what the comments say. Sunshine Sammy fourteen said, "Woohoo, woohoo!" That I'm winning. <laughs> Shout out to Sunshine Sammy. Now every and now every thirsty nigga on my Periscope is gonna hop in Sunshine Sammy's DM. Everybody gonna follow her afterwards. Sunshine Sammy has just made herself go viral on my podcast. Shout out to Sunshine Sammy. She's out here. Shout out to Sunshine Sammy. She's now a superstar right now. Two people commented. Two people commented right now, and I missed your comments. What did you guys say? I missed. I missed your comments. But I, I missed you guys' comments. I'm sorry. What? Okay, nobody's commenting again. So I don't know. I don't know. It's the same. It's just, it's just, I mean, I don't know. It's not trying to send me invited followers. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sammy. You put, you see it. Drake's cat said, oh, but a bad bitch with a thick ass and a thick, and a pink tits is a snatch. That is true. Big, but see, that's the thing, though. When you see a woman when she has big breasts, there's a scientific reasoning for that why you're attracted to that but with an ass i don't know why i am like i always tell you it's embarrassing like the effect it has i'm like when i'm in the club joe k joe coach j knight said if the mic i'm talking into is white do you think it will look smaller i don't know i have a white mic i have a white i have a mic of this same manufacturing but with a different cup this white so matthew and i said people who date average looking people have low self-esteem have low self confidence. Huh? That's true. That can you can argue that. That can be true. Shout out to I Heart You Whites. That's true. They can argue that too. <laughs> you can argue that. But I don't know, but then it makes you wonder what is average looking. 
Uh, well, honestly, it's as hard as it can. Hmm. If there's any women listening to this, if there's any women listening to this periscope right now, Sunshine Sammy, if Sunshine Sammy, if you're Sunshine Sammy, if you're still listening to this periscope right now, if you're still on my podcast, I want to ask you, what is a physical trait of a man that makes you look at him and say, oh my God, I want to have sex with him? To any women listening to me live right now, what is a physical trait about a man? Like a number one thing that will make you be like, oh my God, I got to fuck him. Because like for me and for most men, it's a fat ass, fat tits. But like, what... Like, what is, what is it, what is it for you? What is it for you? And apparently it's all guys on my, apparently it's all guys on my podcast. So I guess there's no woman asked that. But for the women who will listen to this afterwards, let me know in the comments. I want, I want you guys to tell me what is something, what is something that's physically overly just all over off of a guy? No, it just, but then it depends. But then, well, this is out here. I just want to tell most dudes prefer a woman who does have a slim waist, fat ass, thick tits. Like most dudes uh, prefer that diaphragm of a woman. Most dudes don't like like a woman who's shaped like a like a gar bag, you know. So it just, it just depends. I think we all have our. Own. There, there's some dudes that like there are some people who have their own taste when it comes to women. But I think we all. But there are some looks that we just have a general consensus of. And we're like, okay, this is attractive. I want that, you know. Um. So I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting. Like social dynamics. Social dynamics with people are very interesting. It was something one dude commented earlier. Shout out to Matthew Knight. It was something he commented earlier that made me think. He said, um, that people who date average looking people have low self confidence. I think that I, I don't know if the, I was I, I don't know. I think that's true. I think that's I think that's true. I've always believed that was I've what the fuck flew over my head. I've always believed that's kinda of true. Then make, but then you have to argue what's av- what's average in appearance. I mean, when I'm married, woman, I want to marry a beautiful woman. But I'm not, but that's different to me because beauty is important to me because I'm always considering what my children are going to come out looking like. You know, that's why I always said I want to marry a beautiful dark skinned black woman because I want my children to look like beautiful. Like I always, I've always imagined my family being like this, this family of just beautiful black royalty, and we're all just sexy as shit. Like I've always imagined my family being like that when I have kids. So that is a fantasy to me. So I, don't know, I mean, it just depends. Mm-hmm. But then you never know. Like I'm so, I'm so, yeah, I'm so weird sometimes. Like my mom, my mom. I've always been that kid. My mom always told me ever since the day I was born that I was gonna marry a white girl growing up. You know, me personally, I don't think just me. Wapalate said farmersonly dot com. Drake cuz asked me, "Have you ever fucked a Hawaiian woman?" No, I have never stick my penis and sign I sign a Hawaiian woman. Oh, not a Hawaiian woman, Indian woman. I've never had sex with an Indian woman before. I think they're beautiful, don't I think Indian women I think I think a lot of Indian women are beautiful. I think a lot of Indian women are beautiful. I think a lot of Polynesian women are beautiful, don't you know? If I found one and she was beautiful and I and we had a lot of chemistry and I fell in love with her, I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, I'll talk I mean I, we could do make something happen. I mean Grace Cass said only problem Indian girls are hairy. I don't have a problem with body hair on a woman unless it's it's too far. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't know if you guys saw that naked picture that Amber Rose put up on Instagram and Twitter two weeks ago, or like last week. That went viral when she had like a little bush on her on her crotch. That wasn't that. I I wasn't that wasn't that was to me was that to me was like not that. That to me wasn't like. Even though like a lot of people were saying, "Oh my God, her her pussy is hairy," I was like, to me it was very appealing. Like I I liked the little bush that she had. It was to me it was kind of attractive. You know, I thought it was kind of cute. Jake says, "How that go, Coach?" Next I <laughs> yes, I mean, I mean, it's it it just depends. I mean, it just it just depends on the it just depends on the um it just depend it just depends on the it just depends on the woman. Shout out to Sergio Sal, Sergio Como esta? It's really just the prince. Hmm. Drake has said, I don't really care about crotch. Yeah, I don't care either. I mean, but then I don't know because I've never, I don't know, I've never experienced like hella, hella hair. But like arm and but like arm and leg hair, like arm and leg hair, and it might be a little bit too much. There's some hair between your teeth. What happens? Really? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to 
I, I can't keep I can't keep leaning in the comments. I'm gonna lean in for comments every three minutes because I can't keep leaning. I'm, I keep leaning in from the mic. That's why I'm the microphone to feel those listening to the podcast. That's why I keep pausing for like a few seconds. But anyway, so like I don't know. I think what I think what um I don't know. I don't know. I think I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know what I'm gonna marry, bro. I be th- I, bro. I always think I've been thinking about that lately a lot of the time because a lot of the time I find myself seeing couples walk by and I be thinking of like, bro, like. What's it gonna be like when I get married? Like, what's gonna be like when I get married in front of the woman who really makes me happy and satisfies me and stuff like that and all that corny stuff? Like, I always be thinking about that, you know. But then again, I might not be that type of guy because naturally I'm just a really adventurous person. Like, I bounce from place to place all the time. So, I don't know if I ever could settle down with one woman and just do that my whole life. Like, like you gotta have the mentality for that to marry a woman and really stay with that woman for forty seven years of your life or to death do you part. And just deal with the same person every single day for the rest of your life, man. I, I, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if that's in my. I don't know if that's in my capability list. I don't know if that's in my list of capabilities. You know, I'm a try. I mean, I would try to. It has to be somebody amazing. It has to be somebody who really like blew my mind. I'm talking about the bitch who made who proved that Martians really exist. Like it has to be somebody who who blew my mind. Like, it had it had to be somebody who really just changed the way I look at the world and was. Like this, this, I don't know. It, 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 like I said, it has to be something. It has to be something like just, it has to be something that I really would have to call and tell my mama. But like, mama, mama, I found the one mama. It's her. It's her. Mama, it's her. I know it's her. Like it have, it have, it have to be somebody in that sim, in that category. Have to be. Off tops. Had to be. Have to be. You know, but you never know. It might be out there. Dude, what if I married the very first alien that came to earth? Like, what if an alien, female alien came to Earth and she just happened to have hella ass and hella titties? And what if I married her? That'd be so crazy. I married the first alien. Our kid's going to come out purple. <laughs> she's going to be purple. My kid's going to she purple. I'm black. Our kid's going to come out like a hella dark blue. Hey, you, ever, you know, have you ever met black people who were so dark they were blue? Drake's cuz said, what if she had a dick, though? If she had a dick, then that ain't happening. Interspecies relationships ain't happening. If she had a dick, though, I ain't doing that. She, she, she would have lied to me and tell me it's an antenna. Like, she, that ain't happening if she got a penis. That 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 might not happen. I mean, I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I ain't gonna lie to you. Y'all can call me freaky. Y'all, y'all can call me freaky. Y'all can call me freaky if you, y'all can call me freaky if you want to. That movie Avatar, that movie Avatar with the hella tall blue people, I low key call me creepy if you want to. I would fuck one of them blue people from Avatar. I don't give a damn. Y'all can call me creepy if you want. I love Blue Woman. In fantasy, I love Blue Woman. Blue Woman. I love the bitch from Avatar. I love Mystique. I love all them. All them blue bitches. I loved them. Like my, every time I saw one, my dick got hard. I loved all of them. Side of thought. Round of applause for every blue blue woman in, in Avatar. Round of applause for every blue woman in fantasy. Shout out to all of them. Great stuff, sir. Drace Cuss said his worst fear is to get into sexual interaction with a beautiful woman and find out that beneath, beneath the hem of her dress is actually a penis. Guapalata said, would you fuck a mermaid? Bro, I would fuck the rainbow scales off a mermaid. I will fuck her scales. I would look her fin. I would, I would so give Ariel the dick. Ariel from Little Mermaid could definitely get the dick. She's the one who made me fall in love with redheads. I would so give Ariel the dick. Ariel could definitely get it. Ariel could definitely be first on my list. Dude, Drake, that is a terrifying story. I'm not even. I'm not even. I'm not even going to recount that story. You know, the sad thing is that's 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 the actual legitimate fear to have in the world and out there. Like that, that's actually a legitimate fear to have to be that you might have sex with a woman. And she turns out to be a guy. That is actually a legitimate fear. I'll be real with you. I'll be. I'll be real with you. I'm gonna keep it 100 with you. If ever I got into it with a woman, I took her back to the crib, and she ended up having a dick. I ain't gonna have sex with her. But I am going to give her around him or her a round of applause because most transvestites that I've seen in my life or most transgender people, you can usually tell that there's something off about them. You can usually tell that I don't care how much makeup you put on. I don't care how much shit you put on. There's always something to let you know they're mad. And you got to pay. It's always something, whether it's the knuckles on their hands, whether it's the lips, whether it's their jaw line. Their jaw is a little bit longer than it is usually is for a woman. They might have hella thick cheekbones. It's something that you can tell. It's usually something that gives you a hint off. And I don't even, I don't even love this. I don't even talk to tall bitches no more. Like, now I talk to tall women, but like, 
Like you can just like you can just like you can just tell half half the time you can just look at a woman and just tell, okay, something's like something's not right. Some something, something ain't right about you. Like I can tell that ain't, I can tell that ain't the body you was born with. You know. So a lot of a lot of the time, a lot of the time you can just tell. I mean that that's my person. That's been that's that's my been my personal experience. A lot of the time you can tell. Um, a lot of, it ain't no mystery to me. But I I ain't taking no, I ain't taking no risk. So. It's only gonna start getting crazy. It's not really to be honest with you. Kayla, Drake says okay, Kayla Jenner is obvious. Kay Jenner is six foot two. Got the still got a voice like a like still got a voice like Miss Doubtfire. Caitlyn Jenner is obviously obviously a man. Like you can obviously tell he or she used to be a Bruce. You can obviously tell. Like it's not it, when I look at her, it's it is literally no mystery when I look at her. Like she can you can obviously look at her and tell like she used to be something else. Like it's it's no it's no mystery to me. Like she ain't she he she ain't fooling me. Like I said, I've never I've never been fooled by a transgender. It, it would take a lot to fool me. It would take a lot to fool me. It would take a lot. It would take a lot to fool me, to be real with you. You know, but, you know, once again, like I said, times are changing. It With the whole transgender thing, with the sexual operations that they're getting to change them into men, women, it's really not going to start getting crazy until they're able to give men ovaries. Until they're able to give men ovaries and men who become women are actually able to have kids. That's when it's start, going to start getting crazy. Right now, you can just make them dress them up, but they can't have kids. But when they have the ability to start having kids, then it's going to be crazy. Then it's going to be. Then a whole. Then the whole shit's going to get. How outside? I'm going to say this. Have y'all ever seen a gay? Have you ever seen a dyke girl date a gay guy? Have you ever seen a a, a, a gay a gay girl date a a, a a dyke girl? I'm talking about a stu- I'm talking about a stud. A stud gangster gay girl date a date a gay guy. It is the craziest shit in the world. I've seen that before, and I always think that was like hell. Like, how did y'all? Like, I always used to wonder, like, how did y'all two even have chemistry? Like, what were y'all? What did y'all even talk about? Like, I've always wondered how stuff like that can happen. Shout that their Bay Rams are like, how can something like that even happen? But they're catching. We live in a crazy world, man. Anything is possible. We live in a crazy world in a world where Cardi B can make it a successful rapper. Anything is possible. Which, by the way, I wanted to talk about this. Uh, Cardi B is a is some is becoming what, what we can now see is going to be a very successful rapper. People are really giving her a lot of credit and a lot of props. Now, as soon as I saw that Cardi B was starting to get credit for, and people were starting to say she's a talented rapper, and people buying her big or stuff like that, that's when I really knew that I have really lost the ear for hip hop music because. I think Cardi B is one of the most garbage rappers I've ever heard in my life. I don't care how many times I've heard her over a beat. I just don't like hearing her. I, I, her vo- her voice is just not pleasing to me at all. Her voice so, so phonetically in my ears does not sound pleasing to me at all. And I heard Charlamagne the guy. Shout out to Charlamagne the guy. He's a really popular radio DJ. He was on this podcast two days ago talking about how how Cardi B is phenomenal and she's amazing. And I was like, nigga, what are you hearing? That I, like I when people say stuff like that about people who are just so f- terrible to me, I always wonder. What are your ears processing? What sound are your ears processing that my ears can't hear? Because I, I got a totally different impression of her music than you did. Like I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't believe it. I was like, I was like, like what, what are y'all, what are y'all niggas hearing? And it was weird because he said she was garbage, but then he went on ridiculous with Rob Durdick and he got on Chanel West Coast and said that her music was trash. But I listened to Chanel West and Chanel saw, hey, oh, hello, she sounded hella better than Cardi B. So I be I was like like I was like that's the whenever I meet I'm gonna tell you right now when I meet when I meet him shout out to Guapola thank you Guapola I appreciate that when I meet when I meet Charlamagne the God I'm gonna bring that up to him I I gotta bring that up to him because I gotta bring I I have to bring that up to him first time I meet him first time I sit in the front of, sit in the table with him I gotta bring it up to him I'm gonna be like bro like Cardi B is really phenomenal to you like that's what you think is phenomenal like really like yeah I don't know. See, that's and I'm gonna tell you that's the thing about music, and I always say, and I tell anybody this: if you're a rapper, if you're a musician, if you're an artist right now, be careful. I always say this: if you're a rapper, if you're a singer, if you're a writer, all the whatever any creative field, be careful who you listen to or who you go to for critique of your art, because a lot of the time, what they might think is dope and you thought was good might really appeal to a lot of people but it just might not appeal to that person prime example cardi b i consider i consider myself personally i think i have great taste in music cardi b doesn't appeal to my ears Charlemagne the god is a famous radio dj 
he appeals to her ears. Nigga, I think I, I you know, it just it is what it is. He thinks Chingy, he thinks Chingy was garbage. I thought Chingy was all right. A lot of people don't like Triple X Tentacion. I think Triple X Tentacion personally is 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 dope. A lot of people. So be careful. I said that to anybody. If you're a rapper, if you're a musician, if you're an artist, you're a painter, be careful who you let critique your work because a lot of the time, like I said, like you really might not know how dope you really might. I'm gonna tell you. You're not if you're an artist. You're not really gonna know how dope you are until you until you get your stuff in front of at least a million people. Because then you can get a lot of different critique. It's different. It's kind of like how um, kind of like a lot of people look at Iggy Azalea. There are a lot of people who love Iggy Azalea's music. And there's a lot of people who don't like Iggy Azalea's music. Me personally, I don't like Iggy Azalea's music. I think her music is trash. But at the same time, I respect that there's millions of people out there who vibe to her music and get high off her music. So I gotta respect. I gotta respect that. I respect that. You know, this is what it is. Um, but she she just she's just not for me. Iggy Azalea, her music is just it is it is far from the shit that will be in my playlist. I'm I'm far from a Nicki. I'm far from Iggy Azalea fan. Iggy Azalea is is definitely not in my top MCs of all time. Definitely far from it. But you know. Like I said, everybody has their own everybody everybody has their own opinions. Everybody has their own opinions. Everybody has their own things that they like and what they agree with. So it just all that it's it's all opinions, man. So with that being said, I'm going to end the podcast. We're going to watch this movie called Storks right now. I never got to see the movie and my boy Drake told me about it, so I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna tell you guys what I think about the movie after I'm done. But with that being said, thank you for listening to the podcast and you're being a part of the family. This has been JT. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of the family. Press like, press share. And this has been The People's Paradise.